better than your currency. Splurge your millions, buying houses like Monopoly. Fucking nine to five, man, the money is a joke to me. Buying cryptocurrency. Hey, guys and girls. Oh. Hey guys and girls, welcome to this week's episode of the No BS with Birchie podcast. I'm your host, Nathan Birch. This is the show, Unraveling the Truth to the Facade of the 21st Century. We're now exiting the Matrix and waking up to motherfucking reality. Guys, I want to talk to you something today about things that don't teach you at school because, you know, you go to school, they teach you how to be a good, obedient tax slave, to never ask questions, never step outside the parameters and fit inside a box and to be a part of the system. And, um, you know, for me, it didn't really feel like that, right? I didn't feel, I didn't have the feels to want to, you know, be like that. So there's nothing wrong with, you know, working a job. Uh, you know, it's great for people. It's all that. But it wasn't for me. And I realized the further I got down the rabbit hole and the more um, freedoms that I had, the less I cared about the system. And the more that I saw was a lot of, you know bad things out there and it's actually the system is against people they trust the system but the system's really against them and the only reason why they have trust is because they've been told to believe in that system and it's like going to your oppressor go to your you're the victim and you're going to your abuser and that's how the system works and um you know a lot of people are taught bad things about money and they're just really bad financial sense uh, if you, for me, I sort of spent a lot of time. I spent 20 years on this, probably a little bit more than that. I'm 37 next week, and um, you know, looking back, I was interested by this stuff when I was like 12, 13 years old, and I've sort of set myself out on a different path. But looking at, um, you know, the most common things that people talk about, they're like, you know, get a house, get a loan, pay out that loan as quick as you can, save all this money, and you know, so on and so forth. And I quite often look at that, and at the start, I bought my first house, I worked really hard, paid it off, and uh, as I was paying it off, I was like, this really is not helping me grow any further. So I could sit here and tell you today, you know, my name's Nathan, I've got five properties, I've worked really hard, I saved all this money, um, but the money that I'm saving is less than inflation, right? The cost of that money, right? I could be sitting here saying the five properties that I have, I bought the first one for 250000 uh, I worked hard for seven or eight years, paid that off. Then I bought a second one for 350000 worked another five years, paid that off, and I've lived a really shit life. I could tell you that. And that's the sort of mindset which is really bad because the system tells you that sort of mindset. Um, reality, what you're doing is that you're going to earn you know, let's say you buy a property in year 2000 for 250k and that thing's worth a million bucks now. If you're buying the next one today in 2022, um, you know, and you're paying a million dollars for it, you could have bought the same thing 10 years ago, 20 years ago for 200, 300 grand. So the money that you're paying, you know, if you can get that cash flow right, you know, you can expand and play with the game that the bankers do and the rulers do and your oppressors use against you. So what I mean by that, is really the power of compounding interest and the compounding effects, right? So a lot of people will think, you know, you, you go out, you save a deposit, you go buy a property, you pay it down. That's the scenario I was giving you beforehand. I realized after about the first two or three properties that shit, my game's not going to get me to where I want to be if I keep with that mindset. So I had to think of all other options. So for me, every step along the way, I think about what is my problem and what will be the solution and what do I need to do and who do I need to become to overcome that problem that's faced with me. So the problem that we all have is that we have 24 hours in a day. Some of you might work three days a week. Some of you might work five days a week. Some of you might work seven days a week. Some of you might work 20 hour days. Um, in the early days of young, I was a lot more youthful than what I am today. And um, I used to work two full-time jobs. So it's two full-time jobs. Um, you know, gave me about 100 grand a year back in 2002, 2003, 2004, five dollars. And, um, you know, that was good money. And I had to work two full time jobs, but I couldn't do that forever. So I could just keep working hard, saving money, paying a deposit, paying off the property, or I could work out the strategy of working with the equity and working with the assets that I've got. And uh, that's when I really changed my mindset. The reality of it is, is that, you know, if you buy a property for say 250 grand today and it goes up in the next five, 10 years to 500 grand, well then, you know, you're putting down a 50 grand deposit. Let's just assume just some rough numbers here, right? You put down a 20% deposit, 50K down, you got a 200 grand loan, you bought a 250K property. 
in five years time or 10 years time, it doubles to 500 grand. Most people are like, oh, we're gonna pay down the property, we're gonna sell it off and take our 300 grand. The 300 grand in 10 years time isn't gonna do you much, right? It's a lot today, but it's not in the future because the currency has lost its value and the compounding effect of inflation really is against you. So when you look at it and you think, okay, I've bought a property for 200 grand, 250 grand, I've got a loan at 200 grand, what did my $50,000 do? Well, if you were to sell it off, your $50,000 would have compounded into $300,000. So you've technically turned 50 grand into 300. So you've five or six times your capital to start off with. That's a very good cash on cash return and a rate of return, which you know a lot of people go, oh, you must buy Bitcoin to see a return that's so great, or you must go and buy into some, you know, what are the Afterpay or one of those shares or one of those companies. They see how great they are in 2022 when they've dropped by 50%. Netflix is down 75%. Uh, I'm a big fan of physical assets that I can hold, control, um, you know, in a share in a company, anything could happen with those things. In a property, you know that you've got hours of human labor which have been contributed to laying those bricks, to painting the place, to building the bathroom, to building the kitchen, putting the glass together in the windows and inflation. So inflation is making those things constantly more and more expensive. So when I look at it from that perspective, I've literally turned 50K into 300 grand, right? That's a six times return on my original capital over a period of, you know, that's a 600% return over 10 years, right? What other investment can give you that? Because you've got the leverage attached to it. So when you understand how the leverage works, you can go further with it. So let's assume you bought the property for 250,000 and you revalued it for 300,000 and you pulled out some equity from the property, might be say $40,000 worth of equity. And you use that 40,000 to go and buy the next property for 250 grand. And that property goes from 250 grand up to, um, you know, 500,000 as well. What you have here, you have a 600% return on investment for the first property, but for the second property that you've purchased, you've now got a loan of 200 and then you've got the equity loan let's just call it 240 just for the you know some people might sit there and say oh, i've got you on a technicality nathan numbers don't stack up but let's say you've got the 40k and you've bought a property for 240k you've got a loan of 200 and you've got a loan for 40k when you go to sell that property for 500 you've got to repay the 40 and you've got to repay the 200 so what do you have left over 260k that's just for the example call it 250 just for the fun of it right 250k that you've got in your pocket, what is the return on investment from that? That's an infinite return on investment because you didn't even use your own money. You didn't even use your own labor to generate the deposit. You've used your original one. So if you compounded the fact that you just got another 250,000 on top of the other 300, 250,000, you've got 500,000 on a 50 grand deposit, now you've got a 10 times return on your investment. I realize this. Uh, going back in, I was 30 years old, yeah, 30 years old, and I was on um, Channel 7 News in the morning, and this uh, lady, uh, Edwina Bartholomew, asked me this question. And the question was loaded up via the, the creators, of the, the writers of the show, and I know exactly who wrote that question. Um, it's the guy that's the bald guy, thinks he's an expert when it comes to finance on that show, uh, Koshi. Um, he put this question in and said, how much debt do you have, Nathan? And at the time I had about 20 million worth of debt. And she said, what happens if the property market crashes and you go broke because you've got 20 million debt, aren't you scared? And I thought about it, I was like, this is a fucking, this is a stupid question that you're asking me and I know who put it in there. So I laughed and I said, well, if I had to sell them, my properties are worth 50 million, I could sell my properties and uh, I'd have $30 million left after that debt. And I laughed and then everyone was silent. And it was like, it was very quickly like, oh, let's get to sport or something, right? I can't remember exactly what happened after that, but it was very quickly, you know, you'd find the video on YouTube. And um, I remember walking off the stage and it was like a few steps in their studio. And I walked off stage and I thought to myself, as I got there, I thought, fuck, I'm 30 years old, right? And I've got $30 million worth of net worth here. I never really thought about it that way, right? And when I thought about it that way, I was like, hang on a second, I've only been, I was, I've screwed up the first 15 years of my life because I wasn't earning money, right? I wasn't working in a job and selling my time for money and whatever. So really, 
for thirty million dollars at a thirty-year-old, that means that I've earned a million dollars a year of my life since the day I came out of my mother, right? And I was a baby, right? An infant, straight out, earn a million bucks a year. That's what my life would have been at that point. And I thought about it, and I thought, no job will pay you a million bucks a year from the day you were born. Uh, businesses, like so many small businesses out there, people are earning maybe 200 grand a year, 300 grand a year. You might have a high-flying uh, executive from an ASX-listed company as a CEO of 300 grand, 400 grand, 500 grand a year. You might be the prime minister of the country and on five, six hundred thousand dollars a year. But let me tell you, you haven't built wealth of a million dollars a year since the day you came out of your mum, right? And that's what I realised, right? And I realized the power of compounding interest, a compounding effect of that. How did I end up to having $30 million at 30 years old? And I realized that it was a sum of the choices, the actions, the decisions, and those assets that I had picked up on the chessboard on my journey to push forward. And, um, you know, I think about it now, and I did a video recently, I don't know if it's come out before or after this, um, which made me think if the average wage in this country is $70,000 per year, which is the current wage now, not giving what's been in the past or whatever, at a $150 million net worth, you know, it would take me 2,400, I worked it out the other day, it was about 2,500 years of savings and never spending money to be able to save up to that level. But how did that happen? It was a compounding effect, not just of my assets, not just of my money, but of the decisions that I made. I made compounding effect of I had a system and a process, and I keep replicating that and expanding, and it's perpetually can keep expanding. It's not an infinite level of expansion, and it scares me by the time I get and surpass a billion dollars and two billion dollars and five billion dollars, what will I be doing? I don't know, right? But it's a perpetual effect of being able to expand your position. But do you have a scalable process that you could expand upon and compound the effect of the results, the actions that we take on a day to day basis, you know, define who we are. And if you're compounding bad habits and you get up in a bad position, you do bad habits and you become unhealthy, you do bad habits, your finances don't look good, whatever the case may be. You compound good habits, you compound good decisions and educated and very calculated decisions, then you can keep pushing forward. So looking at, you know, the compounding effect, you might be sitting there with 20 grand today. How can you double that 20K? How can you triple that 50K? How can you quadruple your 200 grand? That is the game that you need to be thinking about. You need to be understanding when you sprinkle in the elements of how does currency work? How does the financial system work? How does money work? Um, and most importantly, how does inflation work? And what is the system? What is the chessboard made up of? And it's when you put those elements into consideration, then you go, wow, the compounding effect of my decisions and my wealth, I can compound these you know, perpetually uh, to as many ways that I can. Um, has there been sacrifices from that shit? Yeah, right? Like there's been... I did a video the other day as well, right? A little video out at the motel. I'm doing millions and millions of dollars worth of reno. I'm driving a $500 car at the moment, right? And I'm fine with that. I've got the new one coming. But it doesn't mean that if I had to sell my car to go buy tiles, would I do that tomorrow? If that's what I needed to do, I would. That is the decisions that I make and then the compounding effect of those decisions. And most people are, you know, chasing an illusion of, um, you know, an Instagram lifestyle. They're chasing the illusion of, you know, having a cool car, a Lambo, a Ferrari, whatever the case may be. They could be, you know, the cool lifestyle of having a Louis Vuitton and a, a traveling to Dubai every six weeks and putting a video on Instagram. You need to think about the sustainability of that as well. Once you have your finances sorted out and you've built a system that can reproduce uh, itself and be able to create infinite returns by you know, compounding what you need from your baseline, that's when you set yourself up. And I think that's what everyone should be aiming to achieve is to create that baseline of you know what do i need and then working backwards from their strategy and that's sort of what i work with everyone here at be invested um you know working with my clients one-on-one so you know it's a very simple process right i used to have these flashy slideshows they weren't flashy at all actually thinking about it they'll just powerpoint presentations i might actually pull one out one day and go through some really old presentations that would be a, a pretty cool 
um, pretty cool thing that we should do. So let's pull out some old slideshows and I'll redo the presentations like I would have done as a fresh-faced, pimple-faced kid uh, running this business. But looking at it now, like, you know, you get your 50K, you pull out the equity, go again, get 50, get, pull out the equity, go again. If you just had that simple process of buying an asset, pulling out your capital, redeploying that capital, doing it over and over again, you might have 100 properties that bring you $100 a week. There's 10 grand a week, 500 grand a year. 100 bucks a week positive cash flow is nothing. I reckon 85% of my clients, 90% of my clients that bought properties uh, via my firm in the last 13 years of operation, up until let's say the last two years, all of those people would have had positive cash flow of 50, 80, $100 per week. Some of them maybe even 150, 200, $500 a week positive cash flow. If you just worked a simple equation on $100 positive cash flow, well, then your lifestyle is going to be built from that. And you can have the compounding effect of, you know, your interest rates stay very similar, right? Yes, we're talking about interest rates going up and, you know, all that sort of stuff. But who cares if it's, you know, 3% or 3.5% or 4% interest rate you're paying or 2.5% interest rate. It's really irrelevant when you look at the fact that inflation is traveling at reportedly at 5.1% when it's more like 15, 20% that you're paying this year more than what you were last year. Look at your petrol pump, look at the food, look at the cost of an ice cream at the service station. You're not getting change from five bucks for buying an ice cream, right? Who remembers buying five red frogs for five cents, right? I'm showing my age now. But reality it is, is that when you sprinkle in inflation, right, you want to be making sure that you're compounding you, most people are going to get crushed from what they're seeing at the moment. People's lives are not what they were five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Everyone's reminiscing on their parents and their lifestyle. Their lifestyle is very different than what your lifestyle is and your lifestyle is very different than what your kid's lifestyle is going to be. And you can only control what you can today. You can't go back to the future. You can't go into the future. We will be going into the future. Hopefully, touch wood, we'll all be going into the future. And you can only make changes and decisions that you make today and make sure that you're compounding and understanding the compounding effect of that. If you could have 50 grand and turn into 500 grand and turn that 500 grand into 5 million and 5 million into 50 million, that is the process of what you need to do. Have a strategy around that. If you need help building that strategy, if you need help building a foundation property portfolio, I'll talk about buying 10 properties as a foundation and then adding on top of that by creating equity, growth, uh, capital appreciation as well as cash flow uh, generating. Um, it's important to have that right strategy with the foundations. A lot of people try and get creative. They try and think they're recreating the wheel, right? They think they've been to a seminar and it's the greatest thing ever. They're subdividing a block. They're going to become a granny flat builder. They're going to invest in NDIS and they're going to re redo something that's never been thought of beforehand. All these things have been done beforehand. Don't get caught up with a glossy, new, fresh idea. Have a very sound plan, very sound strategy, and then take that strategy and make it your bitch. If you need help from that, on anything on that front, creating a plan, creating a strategy, reach out to my team, one 367 925 email us at admin at beinvestor.com.au. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and find us on uh, Spotify and uh, Google Play, Apple Play, and we'll be back, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Bye for now. Like Bilal said, man, we stuck in the matrix. This my advice, don't care if you take it. The dollar back to die, soon to be hyperinflated. This my two cents, don't care if you save it. Join be decentralized, and you will see. You be lied to the whole time, and it's the irony. Cause they do the exact opposite. You become a slave to the system. And if your money, all they do is profit. There's no conspiracy theory, you better hear me. Crypto will set you free before the system does. I don't care. If you do or you don't But what I'm saying is the truth to the reason you choke I've never been a failure Excuse my behavior Keep talking, haters doing me a favor And you're telling lies, I know what they've been telling you I'm the opposite of Donald Trump of Australia Time is amazing, here for the taking My time is never wasted, just can't waste it These girls say I'm too breathtaking